Hi, everybody. You'll find links to the code and to the guide down below. We're talking about rendering dynamic text. And by dynamic, I mean taking input from the keyboard and then outputting it to the window. This is dynamic. Uh, we can handle letters, some numbers, uh, spaces, and backspace. And overall, big picture, what we're doing is I'm taking every key that I want to support, every letter, number, space, symbol that I want to support, and I'm storing it in a map where I look up the key that's just been pressed and I find the corresponding text structure. So we have our text structure right here. The text structure stores the, uh, the text, so the texture, and also stores the destination rect, which is uh, the rectangle that we put on the screen and that's where we're rendering our texture. So we have one texture for every single key that I want to support. And I store these in a map rather than an array. So if you've seen my other video about rendering static text, we're storing all of our textures or our text objects in an array. Here I'm storing it in a map. And that's because I want to be able to look these textures up based on a rune. Now a rune is a type that you get when you iterate through a string. So I have a piece of text like testing one, two, three. And if I iterate through that string, every letter in that string gives me a rune. So I want to use that rune to look up the text object, which gives me the texture that I want and the destination rec that I can use that's the proper size. So how do we create this map of characters? If you scroll down to the bottom, I have a function called create chars, which is create characters. And here's just a long list of the characters that I want to support from the keyboard input. And you'll notice the first one there is an empty blank space. If you don't put that, then you won't be able to do spaces, uh, at least with the way that I have it set up right here. So that's easy to miss. I just wanted to highlight that. I iterate through a slice of all of these characters, and I use a UTF-8 uh, library function called runes to string. So again, I'm iterating through a long string here. So each one I get is a rune. I want to take that rune, and I want to create uh, some text out of it. A texture so I use the create text function that you would see, would have seen in the um, rendering static text uh, video so I use the exact same function and then I that gives me my text object and I key it by the character the C the rune so this is of type rune and that's how I've I've uh, keyed it into the map so I go through every single one and I just create that lookup map and I do that once so that throughout my program I as I'm typing I just look it up and I render the proper the proper texture so where does the rendering happen? So near the end, just before we draw our scene in the, in the loop here, I'm taking my text input, and I'll show you how we get that later. So we have text input, which is our long string of what we've actually typed into the keyboard, and we iterate through each one in the string, which again gives us a character, which is our rune, and we use that to look up our text object, and uh, we get that so that we have our destination rect, we set the X and the Y, to starting at 100, so we have our starting x, and we set our y to our starting y, which is 100 uh, and 100, which is just kind of in the top left corner of the, of the window. And we also add to it the previous width of all the characters that came before, because I want, when I'm rendering my, my uh, rectangles, my textures, I want to put each character after the ones that came before it. So this is uh, a value that continues to accumulate as we're running through each, uh, each character in our text string. So you can see I reset it here at the bottom, plus equals the width of the current character, plus any spacing that I want to add. So I just added two pixels of spacing between each, each character. And then we just render copy our texture, and we, of course, use the destination right there, the destination struct. Now, how do we take our text input, so the input from the keyboard, and then get this value, the text input value? If you go to the handle events function, this is where we take our keyboard events, and we're looking for the text input event. When we have a text input event, that means some alphanumeric characters have come in, some symbols perhaps, and we want to get the value of what's actually been pressed. We need to take the event text text field, take a slice of that, and use raw data C string to strip, strip out any uh, crazy characters, any crazy characters that we don't want to output to the screen. And that gives us a C string. From there, we can cast it to a string and concatenate that, so add it to the end of the existing text input, which is set right here. 
So every time we type something, it gets added on to the text input that currently exists. And for the string concatenate, of course, we have to import the strings uh, library. You'll see that up above. And concatenate just takes a struct where we pass in the first one. The first field is the current input, and the next one is whatever we want to add to the end of it, uh, and both are string types. To handle backspacing, we just listen for the backspace event, or scan code rather. So it's a key down event. We check the scan code if it's a backspace, and we have some text input currently, so we have at least one character in the string. Then we simply reset the input, the text input, to whatever it currently is, less the character, the last character on the end. So we just take a slice here with the colon, and then we go from, so this, uh, what's implicit here is uh, the zero index, and we go all the way to the end, so the length of the text minus one. So we take our last character off, and then we just reset the text input right here. Now there are a couple of other things I wanna draw attention to that I haven't quite figured out yet, and the documentation on these is pretty, not very helpful. So at the beginning, uh, before we start our game loop, SDL docs recommend using start text input. That doesn't seem to be necessary for the program that I'm running on Windows right now. It sounds like start text input is for uh, making sure that the text input event fires. And I'm telling you, I'm able to um, see that event whether I have this or not. It's supposed to be paired with the stop text input. And I put it in here just so you can see it. Uh, but again, it doesn't seem to make a difference. I'm wondering if it makes a difference on other, other platforms. The other thing that you'll find in the docs is set text input rect, which is supposed to designate a rect on the screen uh, that is supposed to take that input. Again, I'm not sure what this does. Uh, it doesn't seem to do anything when I try it, so I've just commented that out. Uh, but you can play around with that. If you, do know, um, if you do know what that actually does, then please put it in the comments below. I have not been able to find a good answer online to, uh, to guide me. Hopefully this has helped you a little bit. Keep an eye out for my next video in the Space Shooter series where I render static and dynamic text to keep track of player score. Cheers.